guys, Robo46 here, welcome yourselves to the final Historic Challenges video because today we're going to unlock the final rider, Kevin Swans from 1993. So we're going to do one more difficult challenge and that is us done for Historic Challenges because we would have unlocked absolutely everything. Uh, we've unlocked all the teams already. Um, I think I'm going to use Casey Stoner for this one and we're going to Mazzano. So here we go, the final race in historic mode. What can we do using Casey Stoner on his Ducati? Here we go. That was a decent enough start as we go into turn one. Yeah, well, we've gone into the lead now. Now we just gotta see if we can stay here. Nine laps around here. Usually in, in the career mode, the AI are really weak around here. So it'll be interesting to see how they are in this game mode. Tell you what, this Ducati feels like it handles better than the one I'm using in career mode. This one actually goes around the corners. I've already got 0.8 of a second lead. So uh, I think that, yes, the AI are going to be pretty weak in this race. But yeah, like I said, this is the final Historic Challenges video because when we win this one, if we win this one, um, we will have enough to buy Kevin Swan. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been a good little series. And, uh, yeah, thank you everyone who's been supporting this series. I know some people dropped off, dropped off it, you know, a couple of weeks in. But uh, it's been good to do it. But uh, like I've said previously, it's, it's not my favourite historic mode that they've done. Um, I haven't liked the way that it almost feels almost like uh, microtransactions could have been implemented, but they weren't. So I don't know if they are testing the water for that for the future. I hope they're not. But I've, not, I've enjoyed, you know, unlocking all the riders and bikes and stuff, so... It's uh, it's been been a good good uh, series to do, and I knew that it was going to obviously end at some point, like all of these series do. Um, but yeah, that is, you know, th this is the end of the historic mode for MotoGP 20, unless they decide to add any more riders as DLC. But I don't think they will. I mean, the two riders that they did add was Colin Edwards and Spider-Man Melandri. And you didn't have to unlock them, you know, as soon as you bought them, then uh, they were already unlocked. So, yeah. It's uh, coming to an end, this one. But, of course, we've still got career mode going. We've still got the uh, the league happening every Sunday. I will try to stream another multiplayer session at some point next week. Um, obviously, I stream Four Wheel Friday on the Friday Just Gone. And as I said during the stream, I'm, I was pretty sure that I was going to get some uh, copyright notifications from that video because I left the music on. And strangely enough, I had five copyright notifications come through as soon as the video was um, available after I finished the stream. Once it was ready for people to start viewing again, um, yeah, all the copyright notifications came through about all the music in the in the stream, which I, I, I knew that was going to happen, um, so yeah, that's fine, but yeah, I will be streaming some MotoGP 20 multiplayer at some point during the week, so uh, be sure to look out for that, and uh, yeah, I will have to fill the time with some other stuff, maybe go and do some um, Alaman TT Ride on the Edge 2 stuff, maybe go back to that, so yeah, uh, yeah, obviously we'll we've got a long run until Ride Four comes out, so there is a, a long, long wait for for Ride Four. But um, looking forward to when that comes out because obviously there's uh, a lot of different riding disciplines in that game, and we've got obviously a lot of bikes and different types of bikes and stuff like that. So looking forward to when Ride Four eventually comes out. At this point, though, I just want to see some, like, you know, straight-up gameplay. 
because all we've seen is just trailer stuff um, and it's all been in engine footage not actual gameplay so yeah it would be nice to see some proper gameplay of ride 4 to see what it's looking like and uh, I'm most excited for the endurance mode in that game because obviously they've got animated pit stops and uh, it has said that they're um, you know they, they some in some respects they are interactive so it'd be interesting to see how that is implemented but yeah the end of historic mode for me on MotoGP 20 I mean when like the Red Bull rookies come out as DLC and uh, well it won't be DLC more like patched in and also Moto E then uh, obviously I'll do a season in both for both of them and see how we get on with them but yeah this is just uh, one thing ticked off the list of MotoGP 20 the thing is with the career mode as well obviously I'm using Ducati at the moment and after that we've only got three more manufacturers to use which is Honda, KTM and Aprilia and then we've used all of the, the manufacturers in that class and I really don't think that is going to take me up to Ride 4. Um, so yeah, I might just have to, to mix it up a bit. And, uh, you know, maybe some of the bikes that I used as official teams, I'll use as custom teams. And some of the bikes I use as custom teams, I'll go for official teams. So like... Patronus Yamaha which I used last season maybe we'll go for a custom version of that team like Suzuki that I used was a custom team maybe we'll go for the official team but um yeah we'll uh, we'll sort something out so there will still be plenty of content on the channel so it just said to me that Barros is setting the fastest lap of the race and he's currently in second place and I did think that that gap has in fact come down. 1.4 yeah so Barros is catching me. But I do have to admit this Ducati does feel better than my uh, my career Ducati. It feels a lot better actually. See what the gap is at this split. Still 1.4. Still 1.4. Okay. Well, the main thing is he hasn't closed me down much this lap at all. So we might be alright. What does this split say? 1.7, it's gone up. I wonder if this is going to be a fastest lap from me. We'll find out in a second. We've got one corner to go. And then just a run to the line. It's felt like a pretty good lap actually. And it has been. 32.5 fastest lap of the race. The gap is back over two seconds. We've got Barros in second. Jibinau in third. And Ukawa in fourth. Alright, so we're on lap 6 of 9. We're getting towards the end of not just this race, but the very end of historic challenges. Of course, the challenges do continue and you can still keep collecting diamonds, but obviously there's no point because there's nothing else to unlock. So, you know, like, like I said in a previous video, that I could always, you know, set up a like a, a championship and then I get to decide what rider I want to use and obviously we get to go to some of the well the two historic tracks and just do a season in that maybe but we'll have to wait and see and uh, see how it goes because the tr trouble is with doing that is obviously only a handful of bikes are going to be super super competitive depending on the era of the bikes you choose. The two strokes 500s ain't too bad. They're pretty much all, you know, level 
in terms of performance but the four stroke bikes it does depend on what era you go for um, yeah so that would be obviously something I'd have to bear in mind so we're on lap 7 has that gap come down again it looks it looks to me like it's come down slightly but I'm not entirely sure so we've got three laps to go including this one it's 2.2 so uh, I think we're pretty safe this thing I, I couldn't go for the the medium challenge for this one because otherwise we wouldn't have had enough uh, diamonds to unlock swan so I had to go for the difficult one but it's turning out all right I will have to do what I done last time though and off camera after I finish recording just do the easy challenge just so that it actually saves because I've had it before where I've unlocked a few riders and you know as soon as I've unlocked them I've then backed out of the mode and then turned the game off and when I've come back to it those riders are no longer unlocked but I don't have as much diamonds as what I should have done which is what happened uh, when I started the last historic mode video I had unlocked Rossi from 2001 and this Casey Stoner as well and I had enough diamonds to, uh, to unlock them at the end of the previous video but when I got to it last time uh, Rossi and Stoner were still locked but I didn't have enough diamonds to, to unlock both of them which was really bizarre so I will do the easy challenge off camera after this just so that it actually saves my progress because it's annoying when it, it doesn't so I'm pretty sure that you know I haven't really paid too much attention it's only quite recently I've kind of noticed that so whether throughout the whole historic mode series I've unlocked riders more than once because I haven't realized that I've unlocked them it hasn't saved my progress and then you know they've un they've become available a bit later on um, and I've unlocked them and forgotten I've already previously unlocked them so I don't know how many times that has happened I just definitely know that you know recently it's become more noticeable for me because there's you know we only had a, a handful of riders left to unlock so uh, it, it was more obvious but you know we've got there in the end we've only got one lap to go around here at Mazzano the tyres are doing alright the tyres are lasting quite well so one lap to go of historic mode and that is going to be us Renzo has just moved up to second place. Shinya Nakano has just crashed. So has Jibben out. Those two probably had to come in together then. But yeah, Lorenzo's moved up to second place. He's not going to be able to challenge me because he's too far back. But uh, these two took quite a while to actually get into uh, second place. Usually he, he gets in there, you know, after a few laps and then he starts hunting uh, the leader down. But even if he does start closing the gap down, you know, he's not going to be able to do it in time. Especially when the gap is 2.6. So yeah, the gap is coming down. But unfortunately for Lorenzo, it's going to be too little too late. Fortunately for me, it's going to be too little too late for him as well. Because if I ended up second place, I probably probably wouldn't have enough to unlock the last rider. Two and a half seconds a gap, yeah. But it doesn't matter. We've got two corners to go. One corner to go of historic mode. Through we go. Run to the line. That's it guys, that is historic mode completed. Obviously we just need to officially unlock the last rider. So one by 1.6 seconds, Lorenzo done the fastest time, 32.2.
I'm really lucky that he, he took so long getting to the uh, the, the front of the, the pack behind. But yeah, that is it. That is it. Just one rider left to unlock. Confirmation that we will have enough. We've got 18,300 and he's only 14,500. So that is the last rider unlocked. There is the achievement. Just to confirm that we've unlocked every rider and team in historic mode. So there we go. Completed. We are done. We'll have a quick look through all of the riders from both uh, both sets. Obviously, some riders we've not even used, but we've used the main ones. Those are the two DLC riders. And then we've got all the teams as well, which is good. I mean, the teams we unlocked, you know, uh, not that long ago. Yeah, that's all the four-stroke riders and teams. And we'll have a look at the two-strokes, which obviously isn't as many. Four McDoans. And then we've got the teams as well. So there we go, guys. That is everything unlocked in historic mode. Again, a big, big thank you for everyone for supporting the series. But that is it from me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave this video a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel for more content. I'll see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to stay safe and to wash your hands. See you.